Hi, welcome to another video. So in this video, which is going to be very brief, we're going to talk about what it is you are doing when we are solving quadratic equations. Uh, a lot of times, in my experience teaching for a long time, students will get here and they will know sort of how to factor and they'll know sort of what the square root method is and they'll kind of know how to complete the square and they will be able to do the quadratic formula, but they lose track of what it is that we are finding. So I'm going to talk about that very briefly, what we're doing, what a quadratic is, what you're doing, how to solve the x-intercepts or the roots or the zeros, uh, the four methods that we talk about that will introduce that and then we'll get going some more videos on how to actually accomplish those things. So what a quadratic function is, is something with a power two, a polynomial where the largest power is two or the degree is two. It looks like that in general. Now, what these all make, and we know this, is, is some sort of a parabola. If A is positive, it opens upward. If A is negative, it opens downward, tells us kind of the stretch or compression also. Uh, we can find y intercepts very easily, but in general, all of these things are parabolas. Now, if we want to find out where this parabola crosses the x-axis, if it does cross the x-axis, or where any function like ever crosses the x-axis, what we do is we set that function equal to zero. Why? Why would we do this to find out where we cross the x-axis? Well, if f of x represents the height of our function, and we say, I want to find out all the x values, notice the x is not something that, the x isn't something we have, it's something we're looking for. It says, find the x when the height is zero. Okay, when my height is zero, find me the x that gives me a height of zero. Notice, if the height of zero is the height of our x-axis, which it is, it says the height of zero is on this axis, and we're looking for x's that give us that height, we are going to find x values where our function is on the x-axis. Those are called x-intercepts. Those are called zeros. Those are sometimes called roots of the function. That is what we are doing. So in order to find out our x-intercepts or our roots or our zeros, we set our function equal to zero because where the height a zero, we're going to be on the x-axis, and those x values will be where that function crosses the x-axis. That's what we're looking for. Uh, now, what we do specifically in quadratics is we say, all right, if I'm going to set my function equal to zero, I'm going to replace f of x with zero. It's going to look extremely familiar. We just get our function equal to zero. And that's something we've been dealing with for a long time. Like most of like an intermediate algebra class deals with stuff like that. Why? Because it's so important. The problem is, is that sometimes we learn techniques without understanding what we are doing. So if you, if you look at this and you recognize that, you go, yeah, I would, I would probably use one of four things to solve that. Yeah, exactly. What, what would you use? Well, we would use the square root method if possible if we can isolate the power two without any other x's floating around, everything's inside of a power two, we can take a square root of both sides. That's the square root method. We've done that before. Uh, or if you say, all right, uh, well, I, I can't do that. Maybe I try factoring. Why would we factor? Because it solves this for you. It factors this. You can use zero product property. We can factor. Okay, what if that didn't work? Well, I could try completing the square. It is valuable. We're going to talk about that. I'm going to make it very easy for you. Um, generally, we don't use it a whole lot in solving quadratics because we go right to the quadratic formula. Can I use the quadratic formula here? Absolutely. And so those four things, I need you to understand that when you're doing that, when you are using the square root method, when you are factoring and setting equal to zero, uh, when you are completing the square and solving for x, when you are doing the quadratic formula and finding x by this negative b plus or minus radical, whatever, the quadratic formula, you're doing the same exact thing. What we're doing is we're finding out where this function has a height of zero, which will be on the x-axis, which would give us x-intercepts. So doing this, no matter what technique you are doing, you are finding x-intercepts or zeros or roots, as they're sometimes called. That's what you're doing. So why do we have four techniques? Well, because some are easy, but they don't work all the time. Some work all the time, but they're kind of difficult. We use them as sort of last resorts. So that's what we're doing. That's why we're studying the next four videos, four or five videos about how to solve these things. 
Um, so what, what's the look of it? What can we get out of it? That's what we're talking about first. So number one idea of what we're doing is we are finding x-intercepts when you're setting a function equal to zero. So all of the techniques we're about to unpack, everything you know about it, which you've probably seen, is finding that. They're finding zeros. Now, now what, can we, what can we actually get? If we know that a, a quadratic gives us a parabola, there's really only three cases that we can we can find uh, as far as, as x-intercepts are concerned. We can have the first case, which is very common, where our parabola crosses the x-axis two times. In this case, we would have two x-intercepts. Can a parabola cross the x-axis more than two times? No, 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 that's impossible because this goes on forever and ever and ever in the upward opening direction. Um, could you have it backwards, well, upside down and have sort of a, an upside down opening parabola? Yes, and, and I need you to understand that. Um, but really, I'm just gonna give you the upward opening cases here. Keep in mind, if we reflect this, then you would still have two x-intercepts, no problem. So this is the maximum number of x-intercepts that we can get, or zeros that are real zeros uh, that we can get. So number one, this is sort of what we get a lot of times in uh, in factory because we we don't have we don't have this case where we have uh, imaginary numbers we have real x intercepts this would have two solutions no matter what technique you use they are two real solutions and there are two real x-intercepts. Now, could you have less than two x-intercepts? Yes, but I'm gonna to say to you that you can't ever have less than two solutions. Uh, now, one, we're gonna, it's gonna be kind of tricky, this next one we're talking about, you know, well, there's only one solution. Yeah, but you get it twice. It's called the double root. What can happen is this, this parabola can touch, some, some textbooks say touch, some say bounce, some say, um, well, these are usually two ones. So if I, if I think about this parabola getting moved up and up and up, what's gonna happen to our x-intercepts is as this parabola moves up, they're gonna get closer and closer and closer until the vertex is sitting right on the x-axis. This is kind of a special case of parabolas where we don't really get two different solutions. We get the same solution twice, and that's called that's called a double root. And we'll talk about that in our techniques as we go through, uh, like how the square root method can give you, uh, well, yeah, how it can give you the same number twice, or how factoring can give you the same number twice, or how quadratic formula can do the same thing. So in this case, we only get one unique solution. Sometimes we can get it twice. It shows up in our techniques, but this is the only case where we get one solution. There would be one x-intercept. Oops. One, zero, one root. So that's the, that's the second case. We can, we can cross, if we cross once, we're going to cross twice. We can bounce or touch. In that case, we don't cross it. We just, our vertex is right on the x-axis. It is still an x-intercept, but there's only one of them. The last case, what if you move this to this parabola just a little higher? Is it gonna cross the x-axis at all? And the answer, of course, no. The parabola would, would completely miss it. And if it's upside down, it would miss it below. In this case, what's going to happen is that when you're solving on any of our techniques, you are not going to get real solutions. You go, wow, world, what, why aren't they real? They would have eyes in them. They'd have an imaginary component to it. So it would be this imaginary number as part of our solution or a complex solution. And that's exactly what we get here. We will still get two solutions but they're not gonna be real solutions. They're going to be imaginary solutions, signifying that you're not gonna have an x-intercept. So if you're ever working through these techniques and you get two real numbers, that means there's no i's anywhere to be found. 
you know that that parabola is going to cross the x-axis. Since these are all parabolas that we're talking about in quadratics, you would know that by not obtaining any i, any complex part of this, a uh, complex solution, you're going to cross the x-axis two times. If we get one solution, no i, we're bouncing right off the x-axis, that would be one x-intercept, one real solution. If we get no real numbers, so that would be two complex, and they always come in pairs. If you get one, you automatically get two. Complex conjugates, we'll talk about that much later. But if you get no real solutions, if you get two complex solutions, we know that that parabola is missing the x-axis, either above or below. And so what we would say is that that would have two solutions, yeah, but they're complex and there would be no x-intercept. So that's, that's what we really need to know. Just a little recap here. What we're doing is we're saying these things are all parabolas and we're going to solve them. What's solving mean? Solving means that we're going to be finding x-intercepts, zeros, roots. We're finding basically where this parabola has a height of zero. That means where the parabola crosses the x-axis, bounces out the x-axis. That means set your function equal to that height and solve for x. Solve for the x's that give me a height of zero. That's going to give me the x values where the parabola crosses, or any function in general, crosses or touches the x-axis. We can have only three cases. We can have one where we cross it twice, either up, upward opening or downward. That's going to be two solutions, two real solutions, two x-intercepts. You will have no i's here. Nothing imaginary. We could have one real solution. Generally, we'd get the same number twice. What that means is that our x-intercepts, yeah, there's two of them, but they're the same point. What's that mean? That means that we're bouncing off the x-axis. That will be one real solution. There will be no i's, no complex number here, uh, but only one x-intercept. You're bouncing. The vertex will be on your x-axis. Doing this, if you see this, uh, you will have found your vertex. That's an important point for us to know. Last one, if we get complex solutions out of a quadratic, there will be two of them. Uh, they will have eyes in them, and what that means is that you will not be crossing or touching or any way interacting with that x-axis um, on, your, on your parabola. So why this is important is because we're not going to be graphing all of our parabolas. We will graph some of them, but we want to know, even without graphing them, whether we cross twice, touch once, or whether we miss it completely. And that comes down to our solutions, having two real, one real, or two complex. I hope that makes sense. That's what you're doing with all of the next techniques in the next like four to five, to six videos that we're gonna be, we're gonna be talking about. So we're gonna start next video. We'll talk about the, uh, the square root method and we'll go from there.